Hello, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to whoever's listening and wherever and whenever you're listening. Welcome. Episode 26 of the TJ Martino podcast. Uh, I'm happy to be back. Uh, but as you can see by my get up, if you're watching on video, it's not been happy times uh, for me as a football fan. Uh, today uh, was actually one day that I actually am really excited for, usually uh, every f- couple of years when my hometown Bengals take on my Philadelphia Eagles. It's always a fun game. I went to the one uh, a couple of years ago where the Eagles got absolutely dominated. I went to the game at Paul Brown Stadium, uh, and that was a fun game. Uh, but whenever these two teams play, it's always weird circumstances, weird atmosphere. Uh, and usually the Bengals win. I mean, the Bengals have a – I think they are the toughest p- opponent for the Eagles historically. Uh, so it was, uh, you know, it was – it was. I was excited because both these teams were 0-2 0-2, and they had a lot to prove. So uh, who was I rooting for? I honestly didn't care. <laughs> I really didn't because uh, a lot of my friends and my peers, they were asking me, they're like – how do you feel about this? And, and, you know, going into the game and to be honest, I was like, this is just going to be a lot of terrible football. We know both these teams. They're very similar, honestly, in the way that they're structured because they're the offensive lines for both of these teams, uh, you know, were a problem. And, and both these teams were, are offensively strong, um, offensively challenged. So I think that definitely was going to play into it. That was what I was thinking going in. And I was right on that. Um, and I think it was a little bit into the first quarter. I think maybe two or three minutes in. It was after the first field goal by the Eagles. I said, this game is going to be a tie. I said it. Uh, Harrison, friend of the show, he was here watching the game. Jack Quell, also here on the show. He was watching the game here with me. They can attest to it. I predicted this game was going to be a tie. I predicted it was going to be three to three. I said, Eagles will get this field goal now. And then the Bengals will get one in the second half. And then that'll be it. The game will go to overtime. Nobody will score, and it'll be a tie. Well, I was kind – as soon as I said that, like as soon as I said that, the uh, the Bengals came up and tied the game with a field goal. And I was like, okay, now that's the last field goal. It's over. And then like a few plays later, the Eagles score with a, that deep ball to Greg Ward, who was wide open and, uh, you know, ended up crushing that. And then the Bengals, I think, scored two before half. So uh, obviously that ended. But the game itself – as you know, was just so frustrating. I, I, <laughs> as a fan of both these teams, I, I, I started to see the tie coming, and it just became more and more clear that we were going to tie. Uh, and honestly, I mean, I guess I could celebrate that both of my teams didn't lose this weekend, but they also didn't win. And and I honestly would have been fine with just one of them winning and the other one losing. I didn't really care. Uh, that's why, as you can see, I got both gear on. But I, I'm honestly not happy to be representing these teams right now, both of them. I mean, th- this was horrendous football today, guys. It, it, I, I <laughs> it's hard for me to defend some of the some of the moves made here, uh, especially some of the coaching moves from uh, Doug Peterson. Uh, his refusal to kick the field goal at the end of the game in regulation. Uh, I think it, I think Jake Elliott could have made the sixty four yarder, and that moron who jumped off sides or uh, false started on the field goal basically took the win away from us. I mean, it, I was on field goal team. That is your job, man. You got to be like, if that's your only job, you got to be good at it. You got you to know the count, man. You got to know it. And ugh, that, that one hurt. But again, I, I didn't have really a dog in this fight. I was just looking to see a good game. And we got that, actually, uh, outside of the first couple of quarters. We did get some, some exciting scoring, especially towards the end of the game. But let's talk about the elephant in the room, Carson Wentz. I mean, Carson Wentz. Here, I'm pulling it up here. Uh, as you can see, I got my computer screen up. Uh, I usually uh, don't do this if I have guests, but, you know, since I'm by myself, I think I can, I want to, you know, do some more visual stuff here. Uh, so I'm on NFL.com. Uh, you know, as you can see here, just punt, 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 field goal. Like, that's pretty much what this game was. Look at this. Punt, 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 touchdown, field goal. Like, it, it was a lot of punting. I expected that. I was like, we're going to see a lot of punting. Uh, But let's go to the stats here and talk about the elephant in the room, Carson Wentz. Uh, Carson Wentz, um, he was horrendous today. 
I mean, there, there, I, I, I don't know what to say, man. All my friends are coming at me saying Carson Wentz is trash. Carson Wentz is trash. And like, for a while, I defended him. I was a Wentz defender. You know, Wentz is like Brett Brown. I, I, I'm kind of in the same boat. Like, I defended Wentz as much as I could, as much as I possibly could. Last year, I didn't blame him for the uh, the struggles. I thought there were definitely other forces at play. That be you know the the, the receiver spot being a little bit hollow, uh, but you know I to be honest, it's just it's frustrating because Wentz at at the time looks like you know a couple of years ago the 2017 season that 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 season he looked like he could be one of the great quarterbacks of this generation. I mean he he really did. He kind of looked like the Pat Mahomes before we had Pat Mahomes. Like he was gonna be that guy, you know, and had the injuries and all of the terrible luck that he's had not you know if that stuff wouldn't have happened you know he maybe he could have been but uh, he's losing it man and, and I'm not 100% blaming him because there's a lot of problems with this Eagles team let me tell you the offensive line is horrendous like I said uh the DBs didn't play terrible today I thought Darius Slay was fine at times he was getting burnt a little bit but uh he wasn't terrible uh but Wentz I mean Two picks, both of them were bad. Both of them were bad reads. Um, but he did have the rushing touchdown, which I thought that drive was probably the gutsiest. And then he had the beautiful ball to Goddard, as, or I'm sorry, as Zach Ertz as well, um, which uh, was probably the best pass he threw uh, that helped set them up. Uh, but then the Greg Ward touchdown, which was just a blown coverage miscommunication by the, by the Bengals' defense. They were didn't know if they were playing man or zone, and obviously Greg Ward just went out there and was wide open, caught a pass that anyone that's a receiver in the NFL should catch. Uh, so that was good. But Miles Sanders really impressed me. You know, he had 95 yards, as you can see here. Um, I really like that. I really like that. I, I like Miles Sanders' as back going forward. I think he's he's got a lot of upside. He's, he's athletic. He's scrappy. He can get in there. He get he's shifty. He can get around guys, um, and he can catch out of the backfield. So I I'm a big Miles Sanders guy. I've been a big Miles Sanders guy for some time. So yeah, uh, let's talk about the Bengals a little bit here. Uh, you know why not? Right. Talk gave the Eagles some time. My boy Joe Burrow looks really good today. Uh, you know what is that? 312 yards passing, two touchdowns, 31 of 44. I mean that's. I mean, Joe was not the reason that the Bengals collapsed here because the Bengals really looked like they were going to win this game. And it really just came down to their defense again, just not doing them any justice. Uh, you know, it, the but this, just both these teams are just so equally terrible that I'm not surprised that this game went to a tie. I'm just really more frustrated than anything at both of these teams and, and what we got. Not as much of the Bengals because this was kind of expected. You know, they're in rebuild. This is expected of them, but the Eagles, I'm just kind of, I'm losing faith in them, man. I mean, what do people want me to say? Like, do people want me to be like, oh, like, we're going to be fine? Like, I, I can't say that. I can't say that. They haven't given me enough evidence to be like, man, we're going to make it out of this. Like, even last year, I had a lot of doubts, uh, especially when they were warranted. But even then, like, I'm not as hopeless and bleak as I am now when I talk about the Eagles. <laughs> and it's just because, like, what do you want me to say? I, it, <laughs> they're just, you know, they're doing fine, I guess. Not really, though. It's it's really, really, really bad what, what's going on. But they're acting like they're doing fine. And that's the problem I have. It, it, is everybody just like, it's like, oh, well, you know, all the players and stuff on Twitter are just coming out and trying to put do damage control. And it's like, what, I mean, what do you want us to do? It, this is this is horrendous football we're watching uh, and Carson Wentz takes a lot of the blame for it. I think he deserves it. Do I think they switched to Jalen Hurts? Not yet. I am not. I'm not saying. I'm saying do not jump the gun on Jalen Hurts quite yet. Uh, they did have him come in for a couple of plays. I know Doug's been trying to do some of that. I don't know how much it's going to work, but you know, uh, anything, anything experimental, I'll take at this point because <laughs> you know the, the the little screen passes and and you know pick passes that they always try to run are, are really getting old. We really need some, some diversity uh, in the play calling on this offense it, and we need to run the ball. There, there was so many short yardage 
situations where we could have ran the ball and, and Doug Peterson decided to throw the ball. And, uh, you know, that was frustrating. A lot of the time he passed up on, on, on plays where he could have, I think there was like a second and three near the goal line. And he decided to throw it when you have Miles Sanders, who's averaging eight yards per carry at the time, seven, eight yards per carry uh, during this game. So it was absurd. But anyway, onto the Bengals. Like I said, Joe Burrow looked good. Uh, Mixon was, you know, not fantastic. But the Eagles have a very good run defense. Uh, Tyler Boyd really looked good today. Uh, He got some good looks. Him and Burrow have some good chemistry. uh, And I think he's just a good receiver to have for Burrow. Just a guy that... He can rely on to, you know, when he, when he gets in a in a bind and and, Bur- and I'm sorry, Boyd is very good in those short yardage routes, the slants, the outs, uh, you know, those little plays in the flat where he can get the ball in space and make plays. So I, I like Boyd, uh, Geo Bernard, T Higgins though with two touchdowns today. The rookie, uh, he looked good today, man. I like this guy. He's a big receiver, big body. Uh, I hope they use him more and uh, get him more acclimated with Burrow. AJ was a little quiet today, though. Uh, what is that? Five catches uh, for AJ today. Not not his best work. I think it's like thirty. Yeah, thirty six yards. Yeah, I, I let me pull my laptop up here a little bit so I can read. Uh, put the brightness up. There we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I had that super dark. I couldn't see. But um, yeah, like I was saying, AJ not the best afternoon for him but man like i said just look at this look at the like i like i was saying look at this this offense here just punt 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 interception punt field goal punt 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 you know man this is just not what you want to see as a, as a fan of both of these teams but it's pretty much what i expected and as for the overtime oh my goodness just the the punting and uh you know (sighs) <sighs> and the Bengals not even taking a shot at the end zone at the end of the game. Like, what was up with that? I, I, Zach Taylor, for me, I've not loved either. I think our, I think Harrison told me a stat today saying that uh, the Bengals have lost. Like, they're like they they have not won a game under Zach Taylor when they've been within a score. So that's problematic. They've been very bad in these tight games where it's a one score game and they need to you know make something happen and, and and Zach Taylor just can't he's he's not very creative. He's not a creative play caller in my opinion. Uh I don't think he's necessarily a bad coach. I just don't think he's the right coach for a team that's trying to rebuild right now. And I mean even though he is a young guy, I think that's like the only thing he has working for him cuz uh I've just not been that impressed with him play calling wise and I think this team should be doing a lot better on offense than they are. Uh and I guess that's for both these teams, but especially for the Bengals, like, you know, they got a lot of weapons and they got a lot of receivers that can make plays. So also the penalties for both these teams was awful today. The turnovers, like I said, for Wentz, um, but the penalties were, were horrific. Um, a lot of penalties for both these teams. I'm trying to find um, the team penalties here. I don't know where you find that at on here, but. Maybe there's like a team stats or something, but um, yeah, oh, here we go. Team, uh, yeah, here we go. 11 penalties for the Eagles and nine for the Bengals. That is just you know, that's not what you want to see, folks. That's that is not what you want to see. So, I mean, what do you want me to say about this game outside of, you know, I'm a fan of both these teams. I support both these teams, but it, it, they're making it very hard for me to to be excited for virtually anything they're doing right now because uh, outside of Joe Burrow, I thought he looked good today. And, you know, he these guys just the protection uh, was the biggest thing, biggest flaw, I think, from both these teams, uh, especially the Eagles. Though. Jason Peters, man. I got to talk about Jason Peters for a second, and then we'll wrap this up with uh, with the Bengals and Eagles. But uh, Jason Peters, oh my goodness, man! Uh, I look, I respect the hell out of Jason Peters. I think Jason Peters is one of the great offensive linemen in the history of, co- of I'm sorry, not college NFL football. Uh, you know, this guy has been around for a long time. Has been a multiple time Pro Bowler. You know been played, you know, 
is a Super Bowl champion, even though he was hurt that season. Uh, went to the Super Bowl. I mean, this guy, this guy has done it all. He's he's one of the best. He's one of the best to do it. But at this point in his career, I mean, he was supposed to retire this season. This was supposed to be his first season retired, but he came back because the Eagles needed him. And oops, he was supposed to he was supposed to play guard originally, and they ended up doing it to where he, you know, switched back to tackle because, you know, they, they needed him because of all of the injuries they had at tackle and, and a guard just all over the place. They had so many injuries in offensive line, they had to move back to tackle. And so I mentioned Chase Young getting beat bad. I'm sorry, Chase Young beating Jason Peters bad uh, in the first game against the Washington football team, which pray for Chase Young. Hope he's okay. Um, he got injured today, but... uh. You know, like I said, Chase Young against Jason Peters was just not even a competition. I mean, Peters is just so slow, and he's not strong. Like, he just doesn't have the strength he used to have. He doesn't have the the base he used to have. Like, you can just tell he's, like, almost on his toes at this point. Like, I I, I feel sorry because I, I love the guy, and I, I, I respect him and everything he's done for the Eagles. But I, I just, at this point, I think he just needs to hang it up, man. Like, he, is this really the best guy we got right now for this position? Because he's getting bullied by everybody. I mean, there everybody on the Bengals' pass rush was getting after him, and they were taking turns. Uh, it was really something, man. Uh, I was I was pretty frustrated with Jason Pierce. He got hurt, I think, so I hope he's okay. But you know, at the same time, it, it, it's I think it just might be time to hang it up, man. I I, I think we just need to invest in the offensive line, and I know we're going to get Brandon Brooks back next season and all that, but uh, this is not going to be the Eagles season. They've made that pretty clear through the first three games. And, and as for the Bengals, this wasn't going to be their season from the start. We just wanted to see Joe Burrow look good, and he has. So, you know, it is what it is, but 23-23, it's high. I was right about the tie, but I'm honestly not happy about that because this team, man, they suck. <laughs> Both of them do. These teams, not this team, these teams suck. So, I mean, there's not much else to say about that. I mean, let's go on to some other NFL games here. Uh, there's still some going on, actually. I got the red zone on right now, but I think it's wrapping up because a bunch of games just ended, so... We'll take a look at that. Yeah, I think Scott Hansen's wrapping this thing up. Um, <laughs> let's take a look here. So we got um, Dolphins and Jags, thirty-one uh, thirteen. I like the I like the Dolphins, man. Did uh, what's his name play? Tua. Let's take a look here. I like Tua. He's a he's a nice dude. He's got, he's got speed and all that, and he's got the cannon too. He's a lefty, I think, too. So, lefty quarterbacks. Shout out to them. Um, yeah, these pages are taking forever to load here. Got that Walmart connection right now. Um, here, here we go. So, Fitzpatrick. That's why he's been playing. Fitz Magic's out out there. So. Shout out to him. He's been good, I guess. Uh, yeah, he's always Fitzpatrick. I like because he's just always a guy you can just plug into any team, and he'll pretty much just give you, you know, two or three touchdowns and multiple interceptions, but just be, you know, a good quarterback. You know, he's just a guy that's been around for a while. He's got a lot of history in this league, and he's played for a lot of different teams. So, yeah, what a guy he is. Oh, yeah. Um, let's take a look at Jags, though. Gardner. I'm not a fan of this Gardner Minshew guy. I I, I never really saw that much in him uh, outside of the – I think he's got a cool look to him. I like the mustache. I think that's kind of a, you know, a ballsy look, I suppose, for 2020. You know, I like how these athletes, they, you know, some of them, you know, like James Harden's got the beard and, um, you know, uh, Anthony Davis has got the eyebrow. And, and I like how he's kind of got the um, the – mustache handlebar mustache on lock but he's been struggling this year uh, but i like this james robinson guy he's he's been nice man look at this good two touchdowns today shout out to him and look at this receiving too catching the ball uh but man this jaguar seems just really look at how bare they are like they just have a lot of young guys uh 
So they got smoked today, though. So that's not, that's about as much I have to say about that game. <laughs> not the most fascinating game in the world. Uh, let's see what else we got here. I know that, um, yeah, Houston and Pittsburgh. Let's we can talk about that one. Uh, man, Houston, they they're in a rut. Man, they played three back to back to back really good teams. Uh, so what? But to start zero and three on the season, that is just an absolute rut. Oops, I think I just clicked on a different game. No, I didn't. Here we go. Um, but yeah, I I I like the Steelers, man. I I think the Steelers. I mean, I don't like the Steelers because I'm a Bengals fan, but I like the Steelers as a team this year better than last year because you know. Big Ben's back and whatnot, but Pittsburgh's look good. Their defense is always good. They're always well coached. I never thought Tomlin was the issue with this team. Maybe last year at times, but uh, you know, I just think they needed they they lost Big Ben early last year, and that was a big shot to them. So I think that last year was just kind of a wash for for Pittsburgh. It'd be one of those seasons you look back on and be like, Ugh, you know, those were some those were some times. Uh, but yeah, Ben back, back to doing his thing. Got some good numbers here. I like James Conner. I almost got this guy on my fantasy team. I was very close. I probably should have done it. Uh, but at the same time, I, I running backs are not my problem. Eric Ebron, he is on my fantasy team. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, well, I guess we can talk about it now. My fantasy team currently at the moment, uh, the Sunday night game and the Monday night game are still to play. I got my phone here. Uh, you know, I got Drew Brees to play tonight and Devontae Adams and Clyde Edwards Alaire, but I am getting beat by 50, 60 something points. So, uh, you know, it is just an absolute, you know, it's, it's, it's bad. I'm, you know, my, my boys did not show up. I, I sat Eric Ebron. Minnesota's defense was terrible. But, you know, <laughs> like I said, uh, I think I tweeted this the other day that at this rate, I'm not going to be watching much football. And I think that's the case. Like I, I am losing interest in football slowly by the day. And after watching today's Eagles Bengals game, I'm just, I'm getting to, I'm kind of just like watching football adjacently. Like I haven't been watching it as religiously as I think I should be, but you know, nonetheless, um, but yeah, as you see here, Ben Roethlisberger, two touchdowns, James Conner. Yeah. Uh, but Ebron, man, that one hurt. I hope they keep throwing at him. I may have, I, I just hope I get, I have Ebron, I have Hooper, and I have Gronkowski, and none of them have been consistent. And I've tried to filter each one of them into the lineup. I didn't put Ebron in yet, but uh, Hooper and Gronkowski have like kind of flip flopped, and neither of them have done anything for me. So I don't know what I'm going to do with them. And uh, you know, Ebron's just putting up stats on my bench. So story of my life, people. Uh, but you know, the, the, we'll just go through a few more of these games here. I, I didn't watch all these. I'm just kind of looking at stats and giving my take on, on what, you know, I watched some of the highlights and some of them are playing on the TV, but y'all can't see that. Uh, and Justin Jefferson had a game today. Um, uh, oh yeah. Okay. So we got Cowboys, dude. How about them Cowboys, baby? I love to see them lose. Uh, 31, 38-31 Seahawks over the Cowboys. Man, Russell Wilson, this guy is on a tear right now, folks. He's on a tear. Uh, I think this is a Seahawks year. You know, They always have those years where they're just fully clicked in defensively and offensively because usually it's just the defense or their O-line that are terrible and Russell Wilson's running around. But this, there's always those years. Like, it comes every like one or two years where the Seahawks just show up and, and they're there. I mean, last year, I guess you could say the same thing. They they gave the Eagles a pretty good beating in the uh, playoffs, even though they were definitely a beatable team in that playoff, so whatever. Um, you know, Buccaneers looking good, too. Tom Brady, Mike Evans, you know. Uh, with, that, with, that, with that talent core, I don't know how you can screw things up. The first game was just, you know, playing a good offensive team and not having any preseason or any time to really figure things out. And the fact that the Buccaneers have already turned it around and won two in a row – uh, you know, it's good. And I think the Broncos, that's a good matchup for them because they're a good defensive team. And it's a good challenge, I think, for Tom Brady and company. Uh, and like I said, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, 
Gronk, OJ Howard. They got guys, man. They got a lot of talent. Lu- oh, Leonard Fournette. I watched him get a carry, and he literally carried like five or six guys with him for an extra like seven or eight yards to get him within you know the five yard line or whatever. So he's a brick. Cardinals took an L today, their first L of the season. How about the Detroit Lions with a game winner field goal as time expired? Uh, a lot of people love Kyler Murray. I think he's uh, I think he's interesting. I, I wasn't I wasn't that high on him honestly in the draft last year, but uh, you know this year he's definitely you know he's got wheels, and I I like the run pass option they do with him. He you know they definitely run more of a college style offense, but they can get away with it because they have a guy who dominated college football uh, and won a Heisman Trophy and is a great athlete. And I think when they get Kyler out there in open field and he can just see the field and throw, that's when he's at his most dangerous or when he can just tuck and run because he's very fast as well. So as long as he can stay healthy, uh, he will be one of the best quarterbacks this year. I mean, he's already proven that. So uh, we got Panthers and Chargers. I I, I like this game. I, I didn't watch a second of it, but um, go Panthers, man. Who, who Who balled out for the Panthers today? Let me take a look at this. Because I'm actually kind of curious. Um, uh, also, we're going to be doing NBA Finals talk in a little bit, too. So stay tuned for that, people. But uh, I just want to go through the rest of these games, and then we'll go to Finals talk. And then one more thing I want to do as well later. But um, who balled out here for Carolina? Teddy? Teddy? Okay, Teddy. I like Teddy, man. I I think Teddy got dealt a really bad hand, um, you know, in Minnesota with that injury and all that. And uh, I'm I'm glad that he's got another chance here to to do something. And they got a big win, man. The Chargers have been pretty, you know, interesting this year. I I think, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, even though they're missing Derwin James, they're still pretty effective. But look at this, man. A lot of punting going on here. It looks like oh. oh. Well, yeah, a little bit. Yep. But not as bad as the Eagles and Bengals where that was just who can be the mo- more incompetent offense. This one is, you know, whatever. We got Curtis Samuel. Shout out to Buckeyes. I like Mike Davis, though. This dude's a load. Um, DJ Moore. I had him in my fantasy last year. But, yeah, interesting stuff. Oh, yeah, how did Herbert play? I only watched a little bit of this game. Herbert looks good, man. I didn't see this interception, though, so I'll have to take a look at that. Eckler, he's always inconsistent. I like Joshua Kelly, this dude from UCLA. I like him. He's a good back. Uh, he gave the Bengals some fits, and, uh, yeah, he's nice. Keenan Allen, you know, he's always going to be good. And Eckler, great receiver out of the backfield. So, yeah, uh, that's a fun one, I guess. Good for you guys, Panthers fans. You got your first dub of the year. Wish I could say the same for my teams. <laughs> Both winless still. Um, but then, uh, the, I'll give some predictions too for this, for the late games as well. Uh, then we got, I'll go through these, through these quickly. Uh, you know, we got Jets and Colts. I watched a lot of this game to Colts obliterate them. And Jonathan Taylor for my fantasy team was a great pick. I love rookie running backs. That's my fantasy advice. Get rookie running backs. Um, Steelers and Texans, like I said, we looked at this game already. Uh, obviously, I complained about this horrendous tie. Uh, this was a uh, this was a scoregami actually. Shout out to scoregami on Twitter. The this game right here, 49ers and Giants. I'm not a Daniel Jones guy. I've been saying that since day one. I I think the guy's kind of you know, eh, not great. Uh, and the Niners, even though they were pretty beat up. Still, we're able to lay the snack smack down on the Giants, and I I gotta say I love seeing that uh, as a Birds fan. So, and we got Patriots and Raiders here. Uh, you know, I I uh, you know I'm I was really surprised at how good the Patriots have been this year. Uh, you know, Cam looks a lot better. I think you know the, the situation in Carolina was probably a lot more toxic than it was led on to be. And, you know, I think that him and Rivera were definitely batting heads a lot. And I think with Belichick, he just understands that Cam is who he is, but he knows that Cam is super talented and he can get production out of him if he just, you know, shows maybe some empathy or something. I don't know what what 
even though Belichick doesn't really seem like an empathetic guy to me, but you know, who knows? Who knows what he's got? The, he's got the secret sauce. That's all I know. Uh, Titans and Vikings. Uh, I didn't, didn't watch this game, like I said, but uh, looks like a lot of field goals from Tennessee. But hey, man, one point win. And how about the Vikings, man? They're starting to look like crap. Yikes. Uh, Browns and the football team. Um, Browns, man. Browns offense. Okay. Okay, Browns. Okay. I can't troll you. They're in a lot better shape than both of my teams are. So, Browns fans, bask in your glory at another 8-8 eight and eight season. Uh, but also, glad Washington lost. So, good for you. I, 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 I like seeing Washington lose more than the Browns. So, good enough for me. Bills and Rams. Uh, this was a high-scoring one. Um, Josh Allen, man. This dude's legit. I, I think he worked on a lot of the problems he had last year. I, I criticized his deep ball. I think he's gotten a lot better throwing the ball this year. And obviously, he's just a big dude, man. He can barrel through the holes. Uh, he's a good runner. He's a, he's a good wear quarterback. I'm a fan of Josh Allen. I like him. Uh, and I like this Rams team I'm, as well. I think they've been a lot better this year than last year when they were just incredibly disappointed. Disappointing, I guess you could say. Then we got Bears and Falcons. Falcons choke another 20-point lead. And this is an 0-3 start for the Falcons. The Falcons are, hor- are horrible this year. They're terrible. Uh, they're going to need to shake some things up. They're going to need to change more than just their uniforms. Uh, and how about my boy Nick Foles? Can we get a shout-out for my boy Nick Foles here, one of the goats of goats, uh, for coming in and stepping in for Mitch Trubisky and coming in and just slinging it? How about my boy Nick Foles, man? I'd love to see that. Uh, he's a beast. So I I, I want to see Nick Foles succeed at anything he does. And the, and the dark visor looks lit. So shout out to you, Nick Foles. Do your thing, man. And then uh, lastly, we got the Dolphins. Like I said, we did this one already, Dolphins and Jags. So we got these two games left. Who do I think is going to win this one? Ravens and Chiefs. This is actually a really good one. I may have to throw this on here in a few minutes. Or wait, this is the Monday night game. I'm sorry. Uh, we'll do this one first. Packers and Saints. I need Drew Brees to go off for my fantasy team, so I'm going to go say Saints. Uh, but again, I, I think this is going to be a shootout. If both these teams don't score more than 25 points, then, you know, I'm wrong. But I, I predict this is going to be a high-scoring game. Take the overs, people, on total points. Um, but yeah, I like... Who do I like? I like New Orleans. They're, ba- they're, they're good when they're back against the wall. They look like crap on Monday Night Football last week. I like New Orleans at home. Then we got Chiefs and Ravens here uh, tomorrow night or tonight when you hear this. Um, who do I got for this one? Uh, I like the I, oh, man. This is going to be a good game. I kind of like the Ravens. I kind of like the Ravens at home in this one, but you never know. Uh, I want the Chiefs because I need Clyde edwards lair to go off. I need him to just catch a million balls out of the backfield and uh, just be a force. I, I think he is such a nice little power back. He's a beast, man. Shout out to you, Clyde. So uh, that's my NFL. Let's get into the NBA here. Uh, I just want to talk about the Lakers and Nuggets from last night and also uh, the Heat game, uh, the Heat and Celtics game, I think is going on right now. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that, I guess. I haven't really been watching it. I've been watching more football today than basketball. Uh, that's probably kind of the problem right now I'm feeling is that with the NBA, it's just, it's competing now. It's got competition, you know. We got, uh, you know, presidential elections. We have the NFL. Uh, a lot of TV shows are coming out still. Movies are starting to hit the theaters again. So there's just a lot of distractions right now uh, coming into play with why I haven't been as vocal about the NBA as I maybe was planning on being for the playoffs and the finals. Um uh, because I just really haven't been watching a whole lot of it, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, I have been, but I've, and now my football football's here. I just I've pivoted my attention towards that. Uh, but I have been loosely following this uh, Western Conference Finals here. Uh, Lakers wrapped it up in, I think it was five or six games. It was five games. Um, so that was good. Uh, we, we, we knew this was going to happen. Uh, Lakers, though, LeBron James, man. What can you say? What can you say? He just, you know, it's almost like a like a routine for him. Hey, let's go to the finals this year, you know. I'm kind of feeling a finals run. 
You know, it's almost a yearly routine for him at this point. Like, I think last year it was kind of strange for him to, uh, hey, shout out to you, Ditch, you're on my podcast. Um, <laughs> again, but um, anyway, uh, LeBron James, though, uh, you know, he had been scrutinized a little bit uh, a couple of games ago when they lost uh, in that game to Denver. Uh, LeBron got a lot of scrutiny, even though he still had a 30 point triple double. Uh, you know, LeBron got a lot of scrutiny in saying that he was screwing things up and, and, and wasn't dishing the ball as well as he should have and, uh, whatnot. But Anthony Davis, man, and LeBron, I, I, I just, we knew that this team was going to have a chance at going to the finals and, and it became pretty evident in this series. I think game four was when it was, you know, obviously very evident that the Lakers were going to make it to the next round, uh, but like I said, I think this was a valiant effort from Denver uh, to come back from two seven-game series in a row and, and give the Lakers a fight. I mean, that game three, I think it was, when the Nuggets came back and won, that was an incredible game. And, uh, you know, it, it made us think, is this going to be another, you know, comeback? But Lakers shut them out. Uh, Michael Porter Jr., though, uh, you know, Actually, decent efficiency on not a lot of minutes. They started playing him a lot less once the playoffs started because they wanted to lean on, you know, this guy and this guy right here, Jamal Murray and Jokic. Who, you, Jamal Murray, man. I have to make it a formal apology to Jamal Murray because I did say that he was overpaid. I think I said that he he might have been. I, 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 didn't, I don't think I said he was overpaid. I just said he, he could be overpaid, uh, which I guess kind of means he was overpaid. But I, I was wrong. I was wrong. Jamal, you proved me wrong. He came out in this bubble and looked incredible. Uh, I mean, he had games um, in the Portland series uh, that he looked freaking on fire. Uh, Obviously, in the series before this one, looked great. I mean, Jamal proved me wrong. He was worth every cent. I think he's underpaid now. (laughs) <laughs> I think they they got a pretty good deal on him for that max. So that's Jamal Murray is a perfect example of how you earn big money. How you take a max contract or an extension or anything like that and you make your you make your franchise confident in you. The Nuggets are looking at Jamal Murray like dude, we we have a great business partnership here. Like and that's the thing. The, the NBA is a business and at the end of the day if you're going to be paid that much money, you got to step up and be worth the investment. And Jamal Murray is certainly that. I mean, he was phenomenal in this playoffs. I mean, I don't know what else I can say. He was a great off the screen. He was pulling up and just hitting shots, deep threes. I mean, and then Jeremy Grant as well had a really good series. Jokic was good at times defensively, was definitely dealt with the tall task of Anthony Davis. Excuse me, but... I, I like I said I, I I really was impressed with this Portland team. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, the Portland team, but also this Denver team. This horrible game poster here is making me think of Portland. Um, I will not utter 2K21. Um, <laughs> I just did, but uh, yeah, Portland. Uh, why do I keep saying Portland? Denver. Okay, Denver. The Nuggets. The Denver Nuggets look good. <laughs> Jeez, that's how you know it's getting late. Um, <laughs> uh, then we got the, the Lakers here, LeBron, like I said, he got criticism, but what he, what does he do when he gets criticism? He bounces back, uh, look great. AD, what else can you say about this guy? He's one of the best. And I like this AD and Dwight set they were doing a lot of. They, they, I mean, they play them on the floor a lot together, but look at Dwight getting 35 minutes here, playing a lot of games. Cause they know this guy's got playoff experience. He's got finals experience. Dwight Howard is no schlub, people. Everybody forgets about Dwight Howard. I, I think Dwight Howard's had a great season, uh, even though, yeah, nine rebounds. It's good stuff, man. That's, re- that's really what you're looking for. Two blocks. Yeah. Danny Green, better, better. He's had his, his woes. Uh, KCP was, you know, there. Rondo has been phenomenal. Not a great game, though, the last night, but he's been phenomenal uh, in this series and in the playoffs in general. Uh, but, yeah, I I was pretty impressed with the Nuggets, but the Lakers, man, I, I, I really like them. So let's go here. I just want to check on this game. I know by the time you guys watch this, this game will be over, so I guess that doesn't really matter what I think is going to happen. But I guess I'll just throw it out there because, you know, 
this is an opinion show and that's pretty much what I do. <laughs> um, so we got five point lead here for the heat. They're looking to close here in six. I think they're going to do it. I think Miami's going to the final and the Miami Lakers finals would be so much fun. Uh, you know, LeBron playing against his old team in the finals. Uh, wow. Eric Spolstra versus LeBron James in the NBA finals. So many, so many narratives here. AD looking for his first ring. LeBron trying to, you know, cement his legacy as an LA legend, I guess, whatever that means. And then, you know, you got this Miami heat team who a lot of people did not expect myself included, did not expect them to be in the position that they're in. And now that they're here, they're, they're proving everybody wrong. And, And they're just, they're so fit. They're in such good shape because of what Eric Spolster does for them conditioning wise. You know, I am sure he upped that during the bubble and whatnot. So, I mean, this team just looks so fresh and, 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 and not only that bam out of bio has just been playing great basketball, Tyler hero. Oh my goodness. I think in that game five, he was torching, torching in game five, uh, or no, I'm sorry. Game four, game four, he was torching game five was the one the Celtics won the other day. Uh, came back and, and, and smacked him pretty good. So uh, this has been a really fun series. I, I haven't watched as much of it as I think I wanted to just because of other conflicts. Uh, last night, I, I didn't get to watch a whole lot of the Laker game either because of UFC. Um, but, yeah, um, Celtics, Heat, who do I got? I got Heat in six. I like. I think the Heat are going to close this one out. That's just me, though. But, um. Yeah, that's all I got today, guys, though. But thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to have another episode coming up soon, and then I'm going to have more guests coming on. I know that's been a thing. I've been doing some solo. I've been doing some guests. I've been trying to do more stuff. There's some other things I want to do. Uh, that's why I'm kind of – this episode is kind of t- me testing out the computer and, you know, the screen recording and whatnot. Um, but, you know, I, I it, it's a work in progress. There's still a lot of things I want to do. So uh, more guests are coming. I have some collaborations I'm trying to work on. If you have something, whether it's a product, I don't know, product, a service, anything you want to promote, hit me up. DM me on Instagram, Twitter, any of that, and we can work something out with the podcast, especially if you're, you know, in the Midwest. I'm sure we can figure something out. Uh, I'm pretty flexible. But, yeah, hit me up. Uh, I'm doing some collabs coming soon. I got some people coming on. It should be fun. I'm working some stuff out. So, uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Check me out on Spotify, Apple, uh, you know, YouTube. What's up? Um, <laughs> you know, uh, Google Podcast. Oh, yeah, I'm on Amazon Podcast, Amazon Music Podcasts as well. Check me out on there. Pandora, I think I'm on iHeartRadio, all that stuff. Check me out. Uh, and keep, keep looking out because I'm going to be posting some new stuff. I'm going to have some more conversation stuff. I'm going to have some more of this, some more sports. Right now. Maybe even do some footage breakdown, see what I can get away with. Um, I also want to do EDM set commentary. So I like watch a, a pre-recorded EDM set from like a festival or something. And I kind of break down, you know, I don't know, just spitballing stuff. Tell me what if that's something people would be inter- interested in. If not, then maybe it's a waste of time, but I don't know. Who cares? That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to waste time. So (laughs) I got time for days. But um, thanks for listening. Like I said, keep following, keep paying attention. And uh, there's more to come. So peace out and let that beat drop.